In this video tutorial, we're going to look at ThingLink.com. And ThingLink is an interesting service, an interesting website that enables people to create dynamic images. And recently, they've also delved into 360 degree content as well. But in this tutorial, we're going to focus mostly on how to create dynamic images using ThingLink. Now, what it means by dynamic is that you can have an image and then place on that image hotspots and little points of interaction, okay, like this speech bubble. And whenever the viewer puts their mouse over or clicks on these points of interaction, things happen. Okay, maybe it takes you to a website, maybe another image pops up or a video starts to play. And so it's pretty exciting to be able to take just a regular image like this one and then make it so that these hotspots bring in additional content so you can learn more about the different homes and the different parts of this city. So that's just one example of many that I could show you. And you can see several examples here on the thinglink.com website. So as you can see, there's this big blue button here at the center that says get started. But before you click on that, you should consider what's the purpose for using ThingLink. If you're a teacher, you should definitely click here where it says education. If you're not a teacher, you can click here where it says pricing to get a sense of what it's going to cost. You can use ThingLink completely for free. There are some limitations, as you can see here. Your interactive videos would be limited to 10,000 views per month, which honestly is going to be probably enough for most people. Okay, so this is a really good option, just the regular free account. But if you're a business, perhaps, or if you're likely to get more than 100,000 views per month, maybe you're a celebrity or something like that, then you may want to pay to get one of these pro accounts. But if you are a teacher or if you are a student, you can click here where it says education and it takes you to a page where you can learn more about how ThingLink supports teachers and there are some great sample ThingLinks that you can click on and you can see them in action. Okay, so here's one that's definitely education related and you can see that there's different hotspots that I can click on. It takes me to some audio from the Apollo landings and there's also some videos that pop up on this interactive image. So if you are a teacher or a student, it's better for you if you go here to the education page for ThingLink and then click get started. Once you do that and get signed up, you'll see that your free account is going to be just a little bit different than the regular free account. You're going to have a class account that you can use with your students. You're going to get some basic icons and some video tutorials and things like that. So that's a good option for teachers and students. If you need more, then you could pay for some of these pro accounts. So having said all that, let's jump in and start using ThingLink. And you want to click get started on either the education account or the business account, whichever is appropriate for you. Of course, you could put in your email and password and click create account, or you can just go here and sign in with one of your favorite services that you use. So I'm going to just sign in with my Google account. So give me a second to do this and we'll get started. Okay, next I need to complete my registration. And the most important thing to do here is to choose what your role is. So I'm going to go down and say I'm a teacher. I should put in my birthday. And if I want to, I can put in an invitation code, an invite code that would invite me to someone's class or to collaborate with them. I'm just going to leave that blank in this case. And you can subscribe to their newsletter if you'd like to or not. I'm going to click done. And it takes me now to the startup page. Thanks for signing up. And welcome to ThingLink. Okay, so I'm ready to start using ThingLink. And you can see here that they have something called My Stream, where it's kind of a social media aspect to ThingLink, similar, I guess, to Facebook and Twitter in some ways. But if you find people that you want to follow in ThingLink, you'll see a stream of the content that they're creating. You can also click here where it says Featured to see some good examples, some featured examples of ThingLinks that are being created. Okay, so there's a few examples there that have popped up. But for the most part, you're going to want to go up here to the top where it says create and just click there. And it takes me to a screen where I need to decide how am I going to get the image that I want to turn into an interactive image. Now, at this point, it also popped up with some available tutorials. So these are short, you know, not comprehensive tutorials, but they will help you with individual aspects of using ThingLink. And so I hope that you'll watch my video, of course, to give you the overview and the entire process of how to create a ThingLink. 
But later, let's say you would like to do some of these things like learn how to use the 360 degree features or setting up a second classroom group, etc. You could watch these available tutorials and see if they can help you. For now though, I'm just going to click this arrow to hide those tutorials. And you can see here that there's four basic ways of getting your images into ThingLink. You could upload from your hard drive, and that's the one that's selected. And it gives me a couple of ways to do that. I could choose images or drag and drop them here. Or I could upload a panoramic image, a 360 degree image, right? So with a lot of smartphones today, you can take a 360 degree photo or a panoramic photo. And you could upload that in to ThingLink to use it, which is pretty exciting. A second option is just to put in the URL for an image that you've found on the web and then bring that in. You can also import from Facebook or you could import from public Flickr images. But in this case, I already have the photo. It's on my computer. So I'm just going to click upload from a hard drive, choose images or drag and drop. And I'll click there and it takes me to my computer and I can just navigate to the right folder or the, to the desktop or wherever it might be to get the image that I want to use. I just double click on it or click open. And now it's pulling in that image that I want to turn into an interactive image. Right now it's just a plain regular image, uh, but it soon will be interactive. Now I'm going to click here at the top where it says title. I'm going to click and drag and erase that and put in my own new title. And I'll just call this countries of the world. Okay, so we're going to teach and learn about the different countries of the world using this interactive image. Notice what you see here. It says click to add a tag. So I can simply click to put a tag on a particular place. So when I clicked on the US, it added an icon. Now the icons that you get depend on the account that you signed up for. So I signed up as an educator with a teacher account. And so it does give me a few extra icons. So I could change what that icon looks like Okay, I could turn it into a letter, but these other icons below, these are reserved for the paying customers. And so I can't really use those. Notice that if you upgrade that you do get access to more icons and you can even upload your own icons and use those. But in this case, I can just use the circles with the colors and I can use the letters and that's fine with me. Okay, so now I get to decide what happens when the viewer puts their mouse on or clicks on this icon, I was calling it a hotspot earlier, but what's gonna happen? Well, there are a couple of possibilities. I could go in here and put in some text. Okay, so I could do something as simple as type in a message about this place, okay? And so now when the viewer clicks on or puts their mouse over this icon, they're gonna see this is the USA. Okay, now another thing that you could do if you want is you could put in the link to a website or an image address. So let's look at a couple of examples of that. I could just open up another tab like I just did, and I could go to images.google.com. And of course you could do the same thing with Bing or Yahoo or several other search engines, but I'm just gonna go to images.google.com and do a search for the American flag. And I can use really any one of these images and bring it in as an image over the map of the US. Now, if you want to be extra safe, of course, you can go up here to tools, usage rights, and filter out lots of the images so that you only see the ones that are labeled for reuse or reuse with modification. So I would like to use this one. So I just click on it, click view image, and this URL is what I would need to click on to highlight, copy, and then I can come back here, paste it in, and now you can see that there's an image associated with that icon. And when it's activated, the viewer gets both the text and the image. Now there are some options here at the left. I can choose it for it to be a small image. I can choose for it to be a large image. You can have a custom rich link. So there are some options about how the image pops up when it's activated. So I'm happy with that the way it is. Now notice that there are more styling options available. If you upgrade, you get advanced text styling and you get some more options like uploading an image from your computer rather than just using the URL. Um, also uploading audio. Okay, so those are things that I can't do with just this regular free account. Okay, now I can go ahead and add a second icon or interactive hotspot. And to do this, I need to zoom in. I'd like to add a hotspot to the country of Chile. Now notice I'm just zooming in using the mouse, using the scroll wheel that's on my mouse, but I could also use these plus and minus signs here or just fit to make it fit the available space. But in this case, I'd like to zoom in on Chile. 
and then I click to add a second icon and then I could proceed uh, just like I did before choosing an icon putting in either text or a link or both and then saving when I'm done okay now think about this instead of putting in the link to an image I could just as well put in a link to a website so for example here is the official government website of Chile and I could easily link to this on my thing link image I just copied that URL I'm back here in thing link and I can just click paste in that address and now when I save it makes this hotspot into a link that when clicked will take the viewer to the Chilean website now in addition to linking to a website what else is on the internet that you could link to well there's tons of things on the internet you could link to an interactive activity a game that's online you could link to a YouTube video and things like that so there's lots of exciting possibilities for what you could link to out there on the internet now I do want to show one more example instead of just clicking on a part of the image and then adding an icon there's another way to do it you can also go here to the upper left where it says add videos music or photos on your image and you can search for content okay so I would like a video about the country of Brazil okay so I do a search and I can find a video that I might want to use let's say this one and I can just click on it and it's going to add that video to my map now I put it in the wrong place it didn't know where Brazil is but that's okay I can simply click and drag that icon and put it where it should be and now I've got a video that's part of my interactive image okay so you can see that there's a couple of different ways to add things to your thing link you can click and then manually add them or you can search for content and then bring that content in and put it where it needs to be the last couple of things that you need to know about include the settings if you click here on settings you can make some decisions about how visible is this image going to be do I want people to be able to stumble onto it or do I want it to be unlisted and that's totally up to you do I want others to be able to edit my image and help me build it that's an option there's also some advanced options but you would have to upgrade if you wanted to use those and then finally here in the lower right corner there's a button that says save image when you save it takes you to a screen where you get your actual finished project that is shareable with others and this is where you truly get to see ThingLink in action when I was building this it was kind of difficult to navigate and I would accidentally move some of these icons and things like that but now that I've finished it off it's done now it's really working the way it should okay so there's my image and my text that popped up this one in Chile brought up a link that I can click to read more it takes me to the government of Chile website and this one here pops up with a video about Brazil and I can click play so Brazil is one of the to watch that video so I hope that you're seeing the possibilities here of creating interactive activities for your students if you're a teacher if you're a student an interactive presentation that the teacher or that your fellow students could click on and interact with it's great for educational purposes but there's also some great business purposes and ways that you could use this in your personal life I'm sure at this point you can see that there's a few different options I have on the right side but the most important one I think is share and I can click share to embed this thing link interactive image embed it into a website or a blog or whatever it might be or I could click on social and just post it that way to some of the social media websites in many cases though the best option is here where it says link you just copy that link you paste it onto your own website or into an email things like that and people will be able to access your interactive image all right so from now on when I go to thinglink.com and I sign in to my account if I want to get back into this image to maybe edit it or to share it again all I have to do is click here in the upper right where it says me it takes me to the images that I've made and I can click on one of them to either edit or to share it or do some of these other things with it so thanks for watching I hope you enjoy using thinglink I think it's an exciting tool especially for teachers and students and I hope that you'll consider connecting with me on, on some of my social media websites like Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. And please do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students. And watch for a new video at least every Monday.